I know you hear me say this every time, but I mean it every time. Thanks. I appreciate you showing up. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of August 18th. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with the format of the show, but if this is the first time you've been here, let me fill you in. Oh, and by the way, thanks for being here. What we like to do is focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. Now, unlike most people, I don't do my research looking for hot penny stocks by looking at the news and the filings first. No, I go to the charts first. I feel that the heat of a stock is determined by the chart. People are looking at charts that are tempting. They're looking for charts that have a lot of volume coming in or a breakout setup or have just been running forever. When I find a chart that looks tempting, then I go looking for the catalyst going through the press releases and the filings. When I find a catalyst, then I've got a hot penny stock. These are the stocks I like to share with you and I got three of them for you right now. First stock we're going to take a look at was hot not too long ago. This is Cosmos Group Holdings, ticker COSG. She was jumping. She was doing 100% gains one day. The next day she'd do 80% gains. There was a lot of attention being paid to it back then because of the news that was coming up. And we're going to take a look at that. Now she is in a atypical breakout chart and she's in the midst of breaking out right now. And she just had current news building on all of that other news. So it's a time to take a look at her. Plus her financials are due right now. COSG finished today at two cents with almost a whopping 36% gains. She's on the pink tier of the OTC. She's current. She's only got one of those green ticks we're always talking about, a transfer agent verified. That's good. We would like to see verified profile as well. Now, it's not a deal breaker that it's not here, but when you're trading pinks, the bottom tier of the OTC, you want as much validated information as you can get. Your disclosures, the financials, that's not validated. No CPA is looking at them. These are just numbers being given to us by the management. The only validated information you get is up here. This is a lot more information than just two green ticks, and it's being validated by a third unbiased party, the otcmarkets.com website. So you want to see those, especially if you're going to be in the stock for a long haul. If you're just trading it for a day trade or a quick swing, don't worry about it, unless, of course, you get stuck holding it. So what does Cosmos Group Holdings do? Well, they give us a description here. Cosmos Group Holdings was formerly a television network and multimedia information and distribution company focused on serving the homeland security and emergency preparedness industry. However, we have shifted our business plan to focus on acquiring undervalued companies which have the characteristics of potential high growth business in a variety of industries. Now, most of this business is going to be done over in the Asia Pacific area, the China region. This company is located in Singapore. Now, they tell us down here that they were primarily looking at logistics. They were talking about delivery of goods and stuff like that. However, when you dive into the most recent press release, that is not even close to the description we get. It looks like they've had a change of operations. They found a company that they bought and it's not a part of logistics. This is the description we get, and you'll get more information about how they're doing it looking at the news. Cosmos is a business group that operates two business segments, arts and collectibles and financing. Through the collectibles, the group provides authentication, valuation, and certification services, sale and purchase, higher purchase, financing, custody, security, expedition services to art buyers through traditional channels as well as through leveraging blockchain technology through the creation of digital ownership tokens, DOTs. Now, it's just easier to think of digital ownership tokens as NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Uh, these are digital pieces of assets, normally artwork and stuff like that, that come from individuals that other collectors find valuable. They tell us with the subsidiaries licensed under Hong Kong's Money Lenders Ordinance, the group currently primarily provides unsecured personal loans to private individuals with a small portfolio of mortgage loans. 
The group is integrating the two business segments by offering secured financing services to prospective art and collectible purchasers to provide a one-stop arts and collectibles purchasing and financing experience. So they're working with NFTs, artwork, and loans. But when we look at the news, you're going to see they're expanding even farther than that. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh my God. Pfft, what happened there? Typo. We had under the radar numbers already for the last 30 days, an average of 29,000 shares. Friday, she did just over a thousand shares. E-GADS, share structure for COSG. What? Oh my God. All right. We have got 1.8 billion outstanding shares, but they say the insiders own 1.7 billion of those. That's an incredible insider holdings. That only leaves us with 124 million shares. Now, normally you wouldn't hear me say only 124 million because it ain't no low float. Low float starts at 10 million, but Relative to 1.8 billion in this stock, that's not a bad float at all. 124 million. Financials for COSG. Wow, they're growing, growing at leaps and bounds. She has jumped here from $671,000. We got three zeros we got to put behind any of the numbers here. Jumping to 4.3 million, 9.3, and now doubling to 20 million. Let's look at the quarterly. All right, the quarterly is a little wacky. She had a bad first quarter for 2023. But we've noticed, if you've been watching this show, a lot of companies had a bad first quarter. I don't think it's about the companies. I think it's more about the economy myself. Now, they do have another quarterly report that's due right now, and I mean due right now. They are late. Uh, they tell us here they have filed the uh, NT10Q. The NT10Q, as you'll see when we look at the disclosures, this is a late filing. It says we are not filing our quarterly financial on time. And normally, if you open it up, they'll give you a reason. They'll tell you their excuse. The Form 10Q for the quarter ended June 30th, 2023, was not submitted by the deadline due to a situation of internal restructuring of the company's personnel and thus workload exceeds available personnel. Based on the foregoing, the company was unable to complete and file their 10Q. This gives them five days, so they've got to have it in by, uh, well, when was that? The 20th? So they've got to, yeah, they've got to have it in in five days. So by the 25th, now let's see when they filed this. We'll check this out by looking at the disclosures. Disclosures. Uh, NT10Q was filed on the 14th, so they have until the 19th to get these out. Now, we are expecting these to be better because of the news. Let me show you the news over here. So we're going back to December of last year. Now, this piece of news, as well as all the news here, except the very top piece, have to do with these DOTs, these digital ownership tokens. And they're working with celebrities. They're working with artwork. They're doing all sorts of NFTs. But I want to give you an idea of how they're doing this. We're going to look at this piece of news right here that came out on December 1st. They tell us here that Coinlectables partners Spink for auction of photographic DOTs. Live from Abbey Road, a selection of unique photographic fusion NFTs part two will be live on Coinlectables on these dates. It's already happened, but I just want to show you what they're involved with here. Between the years of 2006 and 2012, Abbey Road Studios hosted 140 of the finest musicians from around the world. These hallowed grounds facilitated the most intimate of performances. The groups were playing one to another, not to paying audiences. The current collection, Live from Abbey Road, NFTs Part 2, contains 13 photographic DOTs, which include Ed Sheeran, Natasha Bedingfield, Nora Jones, Cheryl Kroll, amongst many others. Now, what you get when you buy one of these DOTs, you get a physical item. You get an actual poster. It measures 22 by 15 inches. 
You also get the digital item in the form of an original high resolution JPEG file captured by professional photographers working under the service for live from Abbey Road. So you're going to have the physical poster and you're going to have the digital poster, if you will. You will receive the intellectual property rights of that image that corresponds to the matching physical and digital item. It's yours. You own the rights to it. If you go to the store and you buy yourself a poster, you cannot duplicate that poster and start selling it. You can with this. Absolutely. You own the rights to it. The DOT digital ownership token is to be held in a Binance compatible online digital wallet. So there you go, folks. They're not just working with celebrities. They're working with ancient art, modern art, anything they can do, including the newest piece of news we're going to take a look at here. Now, as I previously mentioned, most of this news has to do with the DOTs. These next three pieces of news all came out in December when they were jumping on the bandwagon. Artist Nati Yatirat partners with Coinlectables to feature two 3D art DOTs. Artist David Chan partners with Coinlectables for new exhibition. Coinlectables will showcase a curated show of four most exciting emerging artists from Southeast Asia to a 40,000 strong crowd. Whew, that's big. Then we have a piece of news in January. Coinlectables collaborates with Apollo Art Auctions on DOTs marrying ancient art with digital content. What a contrast that is. They are actually taking 16th century art and they're putting it on NFTs and they are selling those. And then the most recent piece of news, which is not recent, this came out May 3rd. This was back in the quarter that was affected by the financials. So this is news that will affect the financials that are coming out. They tell us here on this piece of news that Cosmos and Smart City Technologies have signed a memorandum of understanding for a strategic partnership that aims to leverage Cosmos expertise and art and culture digital ownership tokens to advance Smart City's technology development into Smart City solutions. Smart City Technology is a Philippines-based techno company specialized in the development and integration of technologies into Smart City solutions. The partnership with Cosmos Group Holdings allows us to leverage their expertise in art and culture DOTs to provide comprehensive and efficient solutions to our smart city markets, while also enabling us to contribute to the promotion and preservation of art and culture. I read this entire thing trying to figure out exactly how their technology with DOTs is going to help the smart cities. What is it they're doing? They were not specific. I have no clue, but obviously they know what's going on. But really, it isn't about the news. That's not what I am expecting to move the charts. It is the financials coming out. It is just that all this news was bearing on that quarter. So I'm expecting there to be a jump. Let's go take a look at that chart. Oh, come on. Put away your magnifying glass. I'll zoom in on it. But trust me, this is a hot atypical breakout chart. So we are taking a look at ticker COSG, and we're going to be doing all of our charting for these stocks on Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. So can you, and they won't charge you for any of it. So Cosmos Group Holdings, six-month, four-hour view. We got a high of about eight and a half cents that hit back in December and a lot of volume came in there. Then we had a low of 0013 that hit mid-March. Now she looks as though she's going sideways and not doing anything, but that really isn't the case. There is quite a lot of movement here. Let me zoom in on that. All right, would you believe from that low bubble right there to right there is over a thousand percent. We are down here at 0013 and up here is two cents. So there is quite a lot of movement in there, even though it looks super duper flat. Now, as you can see, she has been hovering and bouncing off of our 200 day haul. That's what this purple blue line is. It's a lot like your 200 day SMA, takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, but then gives more credence to current prices. So you end up with a line that's closer. And recently we have been taking notice that a lot of penny stocks are paying heed to the 200 day haul. And most people don't have that on their charts. I do. That's Hall, H-U-L-L. -L. 
Now, as you can see, it was about three weeks ago. She worked her way up over that 50. There's our big bar showing she meant to stay up there. She's been sitting up there for a while. And once that 200 got close, another big bar with a tall wick pushing through, coming back down. That's my indicator my directional intentional spike. It went up, came down, did not go any lower from where it started. I know it's gonna break out. I'm gonna watch it now. And she worked away very slowly up to that 200. And as her habit is, boom, the very first bar is showing lots of excitement. She came back down, she bounced on the 50 day with the wick touching it, not the bar. That makes a difference to me. And she pushed off of that like a cat pouncing, just getting down and then jumping up higher. And now she has got three bars with the lows higher than the ones before. This is looking nice. Our 20 is crossing the 200. Our 50 is coming right behind it. Those are called golden crosses. People search for these because they are one of the most powerful technical signs on the charts. You normally see a big push on the price when they cross. As we saw happen with the 20, as soon as that 20 crossed, she started pushing up. Here comes the 50. I'd watch it. Oscillators. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is pushing up at a nice even keel, pushing away from the pink line. A lot like the MACD, doing the same thing above the signal line. RSI is at 57 right now. Anything above 55 is good. And my ADX is pushing away from my PPO. ADX is for trend continuation. Whenever the trend changes direction, the line changes. Every little change in direction means it's changing. Well, you can see she was all over the place here. Well, now she's going down in a straight line. As long as this line does not change direction and stays straight, I don't care if it's up, down, or sideways. But it's an easy pattern to recognize when this is going down and that's going up and you have that wedge getting wider and wider, guaranteed, 100%, your price is going up. So our oscillators look superb right now. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, that's a nice steady climb. She hit a low here underneath the 50 of 008, but she had no intention of staying down there. She has been riding on the 50-day SMA, going further and further up. And as she climbs, our bars are getting bigger. Do you notice that? The further up the hill she gets, the bigger these green bars are getting. She keeps stapling down onto that 50-day. That's okay. Think of them as stabilizers. She's holding up this highway she's building up there and she's starting to get higher and higher with bigger and bigger bars. Oscillators are looking nice. Our PPO is going up, our MACD is going up and our RSI is still at 57. And hey, we still got our spreading wedge right there between our PPO and our ADX. The 20 day, one hour chart looks sweet as well. Looking at our five day, five minute. Not a lot of trading. She hasn't had a lot of volume here recently. Boy, give us that volume. We could get a nice breakout here, especially right on top of the financials coming out. She was at a low here of just over a penny. And as you can see, she has been climbing steadily, still having those little bumps down, keeping herself steady. She doesn't look like she wants to go down. She's just making sure she doesn't fall over. Oscillators are still pushing up. We have got all of them looking great and we're at about 57 on our RSI. So there's nothing super hot over here, but it's a perfect setup, all going in the right direction. Bars are set up in the right place. SMAs are right. They got a financial coming out. It isn't looking bad. I would put COSG on my watch list for this week. We now got a penny stock from the major exchange. You got to love these folks because you get benefits that you don't get from the OTC. One, they're free to trade. There's no transaction fees trading major exchange stocks. Not that I'm aware of with any brokers anymore. Two, you can trade pre-market, after-market. You can't do that on the OTC. And it's free too. It doesn't cost you anything extra. You don't need any special permissions or special qualifications. Just get in there and trade. Just make sure to change the period for your trade. It's not a day trade anymore. It's extended period. So put in day plus extension or good till canceled plus extension. But you got to get extension in there. It won't see your trade. So we are taking a look now at Bark, ticker B-A-R-K, Bark Inc. Now her chart, she is breaking through the 200 right now, but it's not an atypical breakout chart. Charts all over the place. 
What we're looking at is a pattern that is setting up beautifully right now, a cup and handle. The price took a drop underneath the 200 down deep and then curved around and it's coming back up and it's almost there and it's going to look like a perfect cup. But what's a cup need? A handle. Well, as soon as it gets even, if it's a cup and handle, it'll drop about 25% of that full run, 25% and that's your buy-in and then it shoots and you get a nice big run out of it. That's the first thing I found. The second is in the news. We're going to take a look at that too. They have a share repurchase program that they are launching. So Bark, she finished a day at $1.34. She went up 15 cents, which was just a little over 12.5% gains. So what do you think Bark does? Works with landscape maybe? <laughs> nope, good guess though. Bark is the world's most dog-centric company devoted to making dogs happy with the best products, services, and content. Okay, Bark's dog-obsessed team applies its unique data-driven understanding of what makes each dog special to design play-style specific toys, wildly satisfying treats, great food for your dog's breed, effective and easy-to-use dental care, and dog-first experiences that foster the health and happiness of dogs everywhere. Founded in 2011, Bark loyally serves dogs nationwide with themed toys and treats subscriptions. Bark Box and Bark Super Chewer custom product collections through its retail partner network, including Target and Amazon. At Bark, we want to make dogs as happy as they make us because dogs and humans, they're just better together. <laughs> so what was the relative volume around the company today? We had a little bit of increase, maybe 50%, jumping from almost 600,000 shares up to 883,000 shares. Share structure for Ruff Ruff, we got uh, 177 million shares outstanding. They don't tell us what the float is, but we know it's never higher than the outstanding share count and could be considerably less. So it's not going to be any more than 177 million. Financials for Bark. Well, it looks like dogs are loved because their revenues are growing, going from $224 million in 2020, doubling that to just over a half a billion dollars first quarter of 2023. Looking at the quarterly, well, she's doing nice. She had a little dip, right? It seems everybody took a dip the first quarter. Is that when inflation hit everybody the hardest? Maybe. But they're doing real good, steady business right along the way. Looking at the disclosures, whoa, we got a lot of Form 4s here, and I did jump in and take a peek at these. Form 4s can be good news. These are filings that have to be made whenever the insiders, particularly the management, acquire or dispose of shares of the company's stock. Now, they can get them and lose them for a lot of reasons, but we're particularly interested in them buying or selling them. Well, above the 8K, all these Form 4s, they are acquiring shares, but nobody's buying them. It's something else going on there. Below the 8K, we do have a couple of small sales, and I mean like a 1,000 shares at $1.20, so they're getting 1,200 bucks. Sounds like somebody's got to pay the mortgage. And then that 8K, that actually attaches to the news that we need to take a look at, and there really isn't a lot of news here. It's mostly about their financials one way or the other. But here, August 1st, they came out with Bark Announces Authorization of Share Purchase Program. They tell us here that the company has announced that its board of directors has authorized the share repurchase of 7.5 million of its common shares, the maximum amount set forth under the terms related to the company's outstanding convertible notes. So they're doing the absolute most they can for the shareholders. While limited by the terms related by our convertible notes, which cap our share repurchase capacity to seven and a half million each calendar year, we have the opportunity to repurchase over 3% of our market capitalization at current share prices. Given our robust runaway, we believe this is a strategic use of capital. So basically they're investing $7.5 million into their own company, but they're giving the value to us. And how do they do that? Not by buying the shares for themselves, but by buying the shares and pulling them off the market so that we get bigger pieces of pie. So between the chart setup and this news, we could easily see a breakout.
Yeah, the charts had some dog days, but it may be time to start howling. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> this is Bark, ticker B-A-R-K, Bark Inc. We are looking at a six-month, four-hour chart. We have got a high back in February of $2.29, and then we had a giant fall all the way down here to $0.10, cents, which she hit at the beginning of May. Now, there's been a lot of bouncing around here, but it is right now we are very much concerned with. She came down from $1.40. Whatever the reason was, she fell down, went straight across, and has turned straight up again. And right now, we're at $1.36, right up underneath that 200 tapping on it. Now, when she reaches $1.39, $1.40, we could easily see a pullback. And since she's come from $1.17 up to $1.40, let's call that $0.30. Cents. Uh, you're going to get one-fourth of that seven, eight, maybe eight cents. So if this does come up to 140, we would expect it, if it's a cup and handle, to fall back to about 132, 130, right around there, you would wanna watch for a, or a bounce. That would be your buy-in point because once she does the handle and she starts to turn, that's normally when we get a rip. And I'm talking about up here, folks. I'm talking like up at 155, 160. Honestly, we could see a rip like that. Our volume is pretty steady and consistent, and look at our chart setup. This is perfect. We have a crossover on our PPO right now, crossover on our signal line on our MACD, a forest of green bars coming into the picture. And do not overlook our spread. We have our ADX going down and our PPO going up, and it just started. See how close they were, and they're just starting to separate. Everything looks good here. And our RSI is already up at 61. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Our high here was $1.55. She was above the 200, crashed down to that low, and right now she's circling around, and she's already broken the 200-day on a one-hour chart. She is still pushing up. She is securely sitting up there right now. Osculators are getting even better. Look at this. PPO and MACD are above everything, pushing up very strong. We have been in the overbought on our RSI. Right now, we are at 66. Everything looks luscious. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. All right, we cannot see our cup and handle from this vantage point. We have got a low here of $1.17. This is the bottom of our cup. Look at all that consolidation, accumulation. People getting the shares while they were on the floor and cheap because they knew something was going to happen. And boy, did it. Right at the end of that day, it took off, jumping from $1.18 up to $1.27. She held that and then fell back just before the end of the day. Market opened up the next day and she took off on Friday morning, starting here at $1.22, hitting a buck 37, pulling back, wrestling with the 50 day SMA, bouncing and recovering, and she is now back up on top of her nine day SMA at $1.35. Remembering that the top of the cup is at $1.40. Our oscillators, well, we just had a bounce back on our PPO, which is looking strong, and has now started that spread pattern again on our ADX and PPO. MACD is bouncing off of the signal line, still has to cross over its line, and our RSI is cool down at 56. It's all about the setup, folks. The chart is set up with the perfect cup and handle. We are almost at the top of the cup, so we don't have much to wait. She should not go beyond the $1.40. It will stop there and pull back. That'll be a good sign, and we'll look for it to come down to about a buck 34, a buck 32, maybe even a buck 30. When you see her start to bounce back, that would be the time to consider getting into this. You could see a nice run. Don't think of it as growing. It's a rocket at that point. Take your parachute. You're going to be jumping off at the top and taking your gains. B-A-R-K, just like you hear in the background right now. Let's round off our stock selections here by looking at a penny stock from the NASDAQ. So we've had one from the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, and the OTC. I told you, penny stocks are everywhere. We are taking a look now at Canopy Growth Corporation, ticker CGC. This is a cannabis company up in Canada where it's 100% legal. Now, this is a very successful cannabis company. Dare I say, in my guesstimation, they are in the top five largest cannabis companies in the world. Now, the company does a lot. 
They got a lot of brands. They got a lot of products. They've made a lot of deals. They own a lot of property. No way we can cover it all. But I am going to share some information with you. Now, the two reasons we're looking at it right now is because of news and the chart. Of course, it's the chart. She's got an atypical breakout chart. Now, I normally don't show you cannabis companies because they don't get a lot of love. Well, when the chart's hot, it really doesn't matter what the company does. The chart is hot. It is an atypical breakout chart right on the cusp of breaking out. And they just had news come out about a deal they made that's going to put a lot of money into their pockets, a big profit margin at that. And this is helping them deal with the financial crisis they've had for the last year, and things are looking better. So CGC, she finished today at 46 cents roughly, put an extra nickel onto her price, going up about 12%. Now, I'm going to read this little description, and then I'm going to read the other one in the news press. Both have something to offer us. Canopy Growth Corporation is a world-leading diversified cannabis company. We operate a collection of diverse brands and curated strain variety. Supported by over a half a million square feet of indoor greenhouse production capacity. Partnered with some of the leading names in the sector. Now over here in the news press, they tell us, through an unwavering commitment to our consumers, Canopy Growth delivers innovative products with a focus on premium and mainstream cannabis brands, including Doja, Seven Acres, Tweed, which deals with their beverages, Deep Space, Canopy Growth CPG portfolio. This has a product called BioSteel. This is a hydration sports drink that is sugar free. They also have skincare products being devised and created by Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart is with this company. Now, the company has a deal with an American company, another very large cannabis company, Acreage Holdings, but they are here in the United States. They are an MSO multi-state operator. Because we can't cross borders, you have to build facilities in every single state you want to operate in. And they got lots of states they're in right now, and they can't synergize any of that yet. Well, the same problem exists with Canopy. Acreage and Canopy cannot synergize anything until federal laws change. So basically, they have set the stage for when that day comes. They are going to come running out of the gates hard and fast, working together. So what is the relative volume around CGC today? And when I say today, I do mean Friday. Well, she did have a jump, and she's already in the millions of shares. So she jumped from 36.8 million to 39.5 million shares on Friday. And it was a slow day. Share structure. We don't get much information here. We got a high outstanding share count, 717 million, just shy of three-quarter billion which means our float could be just shy of three-quarter billion as well, though it could be a lot lower. Who knows? Looking at the financials for CGC, well, isn't that interesting? Their fiscal year ends in March, so we are the first quarter of 2023 here. Well, every first quarter we look at, the numbers have dipped. Same thing here. It's like, wow, she was at $400 million plus for three years, and now we're at $333 million. Jumping down to that quarterly. Now, I'm a little confused by these numbers. That says 95 million for 630-2022. And we're down here the first quarter. But the reason I'm pointing this out is I want to share with you the most recent financials that just came out. Remember, we had 95 million for June's quarter. So we're jumping in over here. And I only want to point out a couple of things. One, they really didn't do a lot of change in this financial. They didn't make a lot of extra money. They didn't make any extra assets. What they did do was bring their expenditures way, way, way down. This company has had a lot of debt, and there's only two ways to really get rid of debt. Take the people you owe money to and turn them into investors. Turn that debt into shares and give them shares instead of money. Or go get some money and pay the debt off. Well, that's what they're doing, as you're going to see in the news. They are getting cash. So looking at their total assets and their total liabilities, we are comparing June. Um, no, no, this is uh, March to June. There's been no change, but this isn't really what I want to show you. Down here, we got revenues. Okay, this is comparing 2022 June to 2023 June. Well, they say $118 million. 
we saw 95 million. I don't know why there's a difference here. But what I am pointing out is that between 118 million a year ago to 121 million, it's not a big jump. It's not a lot to get excited about. But there is something worthy of getting excited about. Look at this, folks. Operating activities, net loss has fallen, fallen, fallen. We got to put three zeros behind any of these numbers, right? That is $2 billion they were running at a loss at a year ago. $2 billion. And right now they've got it down to $41 million. Folks, that is an incredible change. They're turning the company around right now. All right, so jumping back over here, let's see what our disclosures have to say. Uh, I know this has to do with the news and that has to do with the news. So let's just jump into that news because that's where all the filings are pointed at right now. Canopy Growth enters into an agreement for the sale of Hershey Drive facility in Smith Falls. Facility will be sold back to Hershey Canada Inc. for approximately $53 million. I remember when they bought the Hershey factory. Canopy bought this, give or take a year or two, around 2015. It was an abandoned Hershey factory, 42 acres big. Well, they moved into it. I think Tweed and Spectrum are operating out of there right now. Well, they got it for $6.6 .6 million and they are selling it for $53 million. Hoo yeah, that's what I call a profit. They tell us here, we are pleased to have reached an agreement with Hershey on this important sale. This is the latest milestone in our focused effort to reduce costs and further enhance our balance sheet. Upon the completion of the transaction, Canopy Growth will have sold a total of seven properties for an aggregate gross amount of approximately $150 million since April 1st of this year. Net proceeds received from the sale of the facilities will be used primarily to pay down the company's senior secured credit facility. They're getting rid of that heavy debt that's been holding them down. And they're doing it fast. I mean, you see that things are changing, but they, they just told us they've started this since April. So things are changing right now. And as I said, cannabis companies on a whole are undervalued. But the big ones like uh, Cura Leaf, Canopy Growth, Tilray, Acreage Holdings, Harborside, all of these are so far down, it is ridiculous. And when they come back, folks, they're going to come back strong. But remember, not all cannabis companies are equal, depending on the laws they have to deal with. Companies in America, companies in Canada, Uruguay, Germany, Israel, they all have their own boats to paddle. So let's go take a look at that atypical breakout chart for canopy growth. Hey, you reaching for that magnifying glass again? Come on. <laughs> this is CGC Canopy Growth Corporation. And I assure you, that is another hot atypical breakout chart. So we're looking at a six-month, four-hour view here. We got a high of $4.77, which is well over 10 times the price now of 46 cents. A thousand percent difference. Now let's take a peek. Let's jump back three years. Let's see what the high was. $56.50 three years ago, folks. And she didn't have as much going for her then as she does right now. As you can see on our six month chart, she has been falling hard and fast, hitting a low here of 34 cents. She did that at the end of July and pretty much has been going sideways, but look at all the volume that's right there. Here came her financials. She had a little bit of bounce right there, but not a lot, but she poked through. That's what we're looking for. You want to see a poke through and a comeback down, not any deeper than where you started. So this, this works. She came way down deep. Now, I mean, as soon as she pokes, yeah, it came down afterwards, but right after, no, it is above where she started. She can fall down. Now we're just waiting for her to break out. Well, she is coming up. She's broke through her 50. She stabbed the 200 twice and she's sitting on top of her 50, ready and waiting to run. Our PPO has just had a crossover, coming into strength, pushing up. MACD has just crossed the signal line. It too is coming into strength. Our RSI has fallen. It is down to 57, but not too bad at all. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. 
So our low here was 37 and a half cents on top of our 200 day haul. She hit a high of 58 cents, came crashing down, basically did a what I like to call a rubber ball bounce on our 200, went under the water and came back up. This one fell hard. This one came all the way down. And you know, we've almost got a cup and handle here, don't we? If I take my line here and draw that across to where are we? Oh, oh, I would watch this, folks. Just, just watch it. See if this pulls down to about uh, 41 cents and then starts to bounce up again. This could be a cup and handle, very possibly. On her own merits for what she's doing now, she zoomed from the 50 through the 200 without halting. She hit that support that resistance right there and she has come back down and she is still on top of her 200 and all of our SMAs are turning around getting ready to cross that 200 that's going to be a little golden cross that's going to be a big golden cross power watch the price go up oscillators we have a little bit of pullback on our PPO as well as our MACD but they are still up in the strong area and we had a lot of pullback on our RSI that went from 71 down to 55 right now. Looking at our five day, five minute view. All right, she was working. You can see this, she's trying to get up over that 200, but it's still pushing down, right? So she's fighting against the current here. Right here at her low bubble, it went even keel. Now she has a chance, she already has initiative. So once she pushed her initiative, she succeeded because now it's pushing up, it's not fighting against her. She got a good belt out of that, going from 37 cents up to 43 cents, fell back down to the 200, took another bounce. This time she went from 40 up to 46, has fallen back down, but not all the way to the 200. Take notice of that. The price is getting lighter. If it doesn't have to come all the way down and bounces back up, that is good for us. Let's zoom in on that just a little bit more. So there was our 50. She was playing with the 50, bouncing over and over, and now she's come under it, and it does not look like a rubber ball. But we do have our indicator spike here. It went through the 50, tagged the 200 haul, and came down. Uh, maybe, no, not lower, because that's all the way down here. I would watch for this to come around. Oscillators say she's going to dip. There's a very strong likelihood she could come down to the 200 day and bounce again. And that's down there at 42. CGC, she's making a big change right now, folks, and she's undervalued. I am telling you, I can't underline that enough in bold black print. She's undervalued. The company is probably the fifth largest cannabis company in the world. They're making revenues. They're ready to expand into America as soon as we get our act together, and they're already working in other countries. They got beverages. They got vapes. They got flour. They got edibles. They've got it all, folks. If you want to look at a good cannabis company and you thought, oh, I don't know which ones are good, this one's good at a great price and they have made some serious changes to their financials. All the stocks we looked at, I think are good, but it isn't going to hurt you to do some more DD. As a matter of fact, I am requesting that you do some more research because I did not cover everything and I don't know what's important to you. And considering it's your money you're investing, you should be the one to make those decisions. But I hope I made you curious. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.